What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here reviewing today The Order 1886 on PlayStation 4. This game tells the story of an ancient war between man and monsters, set in an alternate history of London. This is made by Ready at Dawn Studios and it took 5 years for them to make it, but let's see if it was worth the wait. Watching a lot of the trailers and reading a lot of the articles, you really think this game is trying to sell itself as an action game, but I'll be honest with you, there isn't much action in it. At the start of the game, I noticed something was off when I didn't even get to fire a gun until 22 minutes into the game. Almost this entire title is watching instead of playing. You're seeing the story unfolded instead of playing it as it unfolds. At the heart of this game, there is a good story in it, or at least I thought there would be because it has so much promise that's never even really broached. You are taking the role of Galahad, a member of the Knights of the Round Table. Yes, THE Knights of the Round Table, as in the ones who defended King Arthur. Hundreds of years ago, humans started showing up with animal abilities, dubbed the Half-Breeds. They were strong, fast, and fearsome. The general population had little ability to contend with this new predator of the animal kingdom, but they tried their best to fight the half-breeds century after century, almost to extinction of our own kind. Lucky for humans, the Knights of the Round Table discovered black water, a magical drink that extends their lifeline by hundreds of years and makes them nearly immortal. Any wound will heal in seconds. Jump forward to the Industrial Revolution and we now have the dawn of our game. In this timeline, we have advanced weaponry, communications devices, and zeppelins to fly around in. Gameplay in this game is really a strange mix. You have sneaking portions that have you trying to drop foes quietly, you have quick time events which are just simple button presses that lead to flashy fist fights, and you have dialogue scenes. Over half of the game will just be spent having people talk to each other about nothing. Do not our time be better spent hunting half-breeds? Patience, Marquis. This world again. Patience. Always patience. Oh, and there's also some cover-based shooting. I put cover-based shooting at the very end because it feels like the shortest and smallest portion of the game. I really, really wanted to love this steampunk style, but the game doesn't really do anything with it. The whole style doesn't even feel complete. Nothing in this game feels complete or even polished. Wandering from place to place, listening to horrible story that has no anchor, and then you shoot for a short bit before listening to more horrible story. That's what this game really, really is. To say that this game has no rhythm would be a bit of a lie. There is a rhythm, it's just a terrible rhythm. The best way to explain the poor pacing of this game is to say, imagine if you're reading a really good book, but every 9 minutes you have to set it down and do 5 jumping jacks. It's not that the jumping jacks are hard, it's that you want to keep reading, but you're getting stopped. When the combat gets going, the game actually is a lot of fun. The controls are sharp, the weapons are responsive, trying to flank enemies or snipe someone in the distance felt correct, it felt good, you don't even need a tutorial to understand the weapons. Personally, my favorite weapon was the thermite rifle. It's a gun that lets you fire out a bunch of thermite and then ignite it, making it superheated instantly, vaporizing any enemy in the path. I will also say that graphically the game does look crisp, although it has one of the most drab art palettes I have ever seen. Everyone is wearing dark colors. Every alley is a disgusting cesspit. Every boardroom meeting is in some weird strange unlit room. Are yellow shirts just outlawed? Why is it that this game is terrified to have even the smallest flash of color? Are only browns, blues, and blacks allowed by the general populace? I think the main flaw of The Order 1886 is they didn't create an enemy that we actually wanted to fight. They didn't create a war that we wanted to be involved in. They claim that we're fighting the half-breeds, but primarily you're just going to be fighting random people. These people are labeled as rebels, or insurgents, or anarchists, but you never really see them rebel against anything except their own death. Playing as the Knights of the Round Table, we get to wear these fancy clothes, throwing around thousands of dollars. Our wounds heal instantly the moment a bullet passes through us, and we have lightning guns. We are officially the bad guys. I felt truly awful hunting through the streets of London, just murdering everyone. 
These people don't seem to be hunting us. Many are just standing around until we pop out of the shadows and start blasting everybody. Especially during the sneaking segments. I mean, who's to know who's good and who's bad? Everybody's wearing the exact same colors. Nobody is clearly defined as a good guy or a bad guy. I was hoping we'd get more werewolf segments. Whenever a werewolf shows up, I truly felt like I had a reason to have all this technology. I felt the fear that extinction was nigh, but most of the time you're just shooting people. Monsters are nowhere to be seen. Another dramatic drawback of this title is the fact that it is brutally short, and I mean extremely short. You can beat this game between meals. When I was testing it for this, I actually ate breakfast and beat it before lunch. With no multiplayer versus or co-op, it just feels like a humongous ripoff. I'm not saying short games are bad. Some of my favorite games are short. I mean, think about games like Limbo or Journey. These are under three hours, but they're so good. They're so rich. And they have mechanics that inside your head you mull over for days. This has none of that. So let's head on over to the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving The Order 1886 on the PlayStation 4 a 5 out of 10. This game should not be picked up by anyone. This short romp through London didn't feel very thought out, and the fact that thousands upon thousands of man hours created it is just rather appalling to me. If you're really interested in this title, I bet somebody's going to cut it together into a 90 minute movie online in the next couple days. And you know what? That's what this is. This is a 90 minute movie with a couple lock picking segments and a couple shootouts. Thanks so much for watching guys, this has been Dreamcast Guy with another review. If you like my reviews, please subscribe for future content. If there's something you want to see me do and I haven't done it already, leave it in the comments down below and share it with your friends. But do me a big favor and keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, maybe check out my last video. Please subscribe, and if you want, share this somewhere with your friends. We're hunting werewolves. Actual werewolves in London. But you know what would have been really awesome? If we were hunting sharks in London. Now that would be scary. Sharks running around in the slums? Imagine running into a shark in the brothel scene. Oh my god. A shark with titties? Just, that's it. That's the internet. We're, we're done.